How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to The Smokin' Android. My name, of course, is Jared, and today is Friday, December 21st, 2012. As you can see, we're all still here. Oh my god, what a shocker. Anyways, now we've got a lot of time, <laughs> apparently, to check out the new Nova Launcher Beta 2.0. Um, no, this is not available in the placer, so don't bother trying to look for it. However, I will be posting a link in the about section slash description below for you guys to go to the XDA thread, check it out, download it, um, and you know, explore for yourself. But let's go ahead and take a look at what this new uh, launch, or at least version of Nova, has to offer. I'm actually really, really excited to show you because I've been playing with it all morning. Um, now, from the beginning here, the home screen, you'll notice maybe a couple of things different from the Nova launcher home screen that you might have right now. Uh, first and foremost, you'll notice that the um, icons are quite large, actually considerably larger than you probably have on your uh, display, um, as well as the folders there are semi-transparent as well as my app drawer is semi-transparent, as well as I have cool swipe gestures available right from the home screen, as you can see here. All right, now, how do we do all this? Well, first things first, you're gonna wanna download it, duh, and then go into Nova settings. <laughs> um, in here, right off the bat, you may notice, and you're not gonna see it on camera here, I'm pretty darn sure, but the background is actually like sort of like a Nexus 4 type wallpaper background. When you download it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Am I a huge fan of it? It's neither here nor there. It's a bloody settings menu background. Anyways, jumping into desktop here, we've got a lot of the same stuff that we've seen from the original Nova launcher, um, but there are definitely some enhancements. Now, as far as scroll effects, I haven't noticed anything new. Keep in mind that I am a Prime user, so that means I've paid for their um, pro license key, if you will. So we do have a little more options than that of the free version. Um, however, moving on from there, we do have advanced settings down here. Uh, we've got some things in here like widget overlap and of course lock screen, which basically locks everything in place and doesn't allow uh, rearranging and adding or removing of applications and widgets to the um, home screen there. Jumping into drawer, we've got some interesting things in here. Of course, you can do the uh, drawer app grid. You've got scroll effects now, uh, which is awesome. Awesome. We also have background transparency. So like I was showing you before, we can bump that all the way up, show you the uh, app drawer here. And as you can see, it's completely transparent. Or if we wanted to go back in there, jump back into drawer, completely drop that down to zero and get back into the app drawer. As you can see, it's a solid black color. I do prefer semi-transparent, so I'm gonna go ahead into the settings there, uh, jump into drawer and bump that up to 50%. Now you also have drawer style, so you've got horizontal, vertical, or list. Uh, you've got the infinite scroll, you can do drawer groups as well. Um, folders as well in the app drawer, jump into advanced settings. Of course, you can hide any uh, applications that you don't use on a regular basis as well to save room. You can isolate tabs, um, automatically close the app drawer as soon as you launch an application, and remember the position, which is actually a really neat features so say for instance you get into your app drawer you've got a ton of apps you're all the way over here you pick an app and you know you're gonna want to jump back to your app drawer pretty soon but you don't want to have to start scrolling through all those screens again and have to locate that application don't worry if you click that option there it'll keep the position of your app drawer that you last left it which I thought was a really really neat and useful functional feature um, Anything else in there that we may have missed? No, we showed you everything, okay. So jumping into dock as well, we've got some interesting settings in here, all the usual stuff, but we do have things like, I believe, uh, dock as overlay. Now this is something that I wouldn't particularly find useful for myself, but as you can see here in the description, appear on top of desktop, works well with gestures to toggle the dock. Now, if I was to go ahead and enable that and show you guys what it looks like, as you can see here, my dock is now overlapping the rest of the screen. Um, which might be problematic. However, the point of this is so, you know, you would obviously move everything up a little bit, that being all your folders and applications and whatever, but this will make it a little more useful for you to use that swipe gesture, although I found it to be just fine without using that particular setting, so I'm not really sure how I feel about that custom setting. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off, back out of there, jump back into folders. In folders here, we've got some really interesting stuff here, I love this. Um, so you've got the folder preview, so you can check out which one you want, you can do the stack, which is what I'm currently using, grid size, kind of like the iPhones and previous um, Android home launchers, and the fan out, which is also an interesting um, option as well. And then you've got the background, um, um, like, look, I guess you could say. So you've got none, circle, square, platform, disc, and a 
<clears throat> excuse me, a custom other if you did happen to have a file. And you also have that background transparency. Now, I wouldn't recommend bumping it all the way up to full because, as you can see, when we open up <laughs> one of the folders, it just kind of bleeds in with the rest of your desktop, which could get a bit confusing um, with the uh, labels there, just in case you don't remember which what the name of the applications that you're mucking around with are. So I'd like to have that, again, at semi-transparent, around 50%, as well as you can have the label icons enabled as well and disable them if you didn't want to. Um, so we were in folders there. Let's go ahead and check out the look and feel. A lot of the cool stuff happens in the look and feel. So you've got icon theme. Now, my particular ROM that I'm using is heavily AOSP themed. So I have been able to see any difference between the default Nova icon pack and the stock Jelly Bean icon pack that it comes with. So I just kind of left it on stock just because I do prefer the stock look of um, Android. You can also control the icon size. And this is where I was showing you earlier the different icon sizes on my desktop. So it gives you a preview of what 100% looks like. You can also have it... Um, Go down to 70% and start saving a little more room on your desktop or go ahead and bump it up all the way, and which is what I did just because it's a new feature, so might as well take advantage of it. It looks kind of cool too. Um, screen orientation, you can have that set to auto-rotate, force portrait, or landscape, or just leave it as default. I prefer to have it as auto-rotate just so I can kind of do things like this, um, whatever I want, right? Um, moving on from there, you also have the scroll speed, animation speed, and app animations. And this is interesting because you get into here, whoops, wrong one. Um, getting into here, you've got relax stock, Nova, fast, and faster than light. Each one of them comes with their own little description. So kind of starting at relaxed here, you'll notice that it says, sit back and enjoy the beautiful animations. Or if like me, you do like the animations, but you just want them to go a little bit quicker to see, make the, the system speed up or seem a little bit faster than it than it is. Um, you've got fast, which is speed takes clear priority over animations. And the absolute fastest is forget animations, make it fast. <laughs> so that actually removes the animations altogether. Um, but I do prefer the fast. And you'll notice here that it is incredibly fast and smooth, as you can see. Uh, get back into Nova, we'll get back into the look and feel, and the same thing said for animation speeds as well as the app animation is a little bit different though, so you've got the system, ice cream sandwich animations, jelly bean animations, or slide, which is an interesting one, so you'll notice when I click that, the, uh, the home button, it kind of slid off to the, to the right there, however, I've noticed that that hasn't been consistent throughout the entire UI of the launcher, so say for instance from the application drawer, Getting back there, it didn't look like it slid off to the left there. It looked like a standard jelly bean slash ice cream sandwich animation. Same thing could be said for coming from the uh, settings menu. Oh, it, it actually did it there. So I guess it depends. Again, this is still in beta, so some things are going to be a little inconsistent. It's still a work in progress. It slid across there for my, um, as you can see, it's, it's doing it, but it's just not completely con in, uh, consistent throughout uh, the UI. But it, it's a work in progress, so I'm sure that'll be um, added in the future, which is a really cool animation, I think. Although it does seem to be a little bit laggier than that of just, say, for instance, the stock jelly bean um, animation. You also have the option to remove the notification bar and have it come up when you slide down. Uh, moving on from there, we also have the gestures and buttons. Now, this is where I was showing you that um, gesture feature where I swiped up from the Google application, the Google search application. Bunch of different customizable settings in here. But if you did want to do what I did there, which is just slide up from that particular anime, um, uh, application, which you can do for any application. Um, all you're gonna do is long press on the application, go on to edit, <clears throat> and then you'll notice that we've got swipe action there. Go ahead and click on that, and this brings up all the different actions you can associate with that particular app icon. So um, in Nova, I actually just chose voice search because it's a lot like stock Android. <clears throat> but you can also switch between like um, choosing certain application actions as well as shortcuts. So it's really up to you, and I really love that they gave us that option because now, if you really wanted to, you could theme the crap out of your device to look as close to AOSP as possible and still have that kind of functionality from stock Android of just swiping up to be able to access your Google Voice search, which I thought was really cool. Uh, get back into Nova and go to unread counts. That's something that's kind of a feature of Prime users, which just basically displays the um, amount of missed, you know, whatever it may be, notifications um, to those particular icons in your status bar there. <clears throat> uh, moving down from there, you've also got the advance, and this is the last thing I kind of wanted to leave off on. Now, this is an important feature because I don't know if a lot of you have noticed out there, but screen redraw seems to be a big issue or drawback with, um, uh, you know, third-party launchers from the Play Store, you know, going from like under heavy uh, resource uh, or heavy tasks um, that you may be doing with your phone you know, going from whatever application back to the home screen. Sometimes it takes a little bit for the icons, widgets, and things to reload. Uh, this should aid against that issue. Um, 
I haven't extensively tested it or not. However, uh, the description does here uh, does read here that says persistence, caching, and preloading to reduce redraws. Uh, comparable to keep in memory options for Android 2.x launchers. So um, basically, that should help towards screen redraws. Um, I've been playing with this, like I said, all morning. I haven't noticed any screen redraws since using or ticking that box. Mind you, I haven't also noticed any screen redraws when it wasn't ticked. So um, it's really based on user preference, I guess. But anyways, guys, that's a little look at um, Nova Launcher 2.0 beta for your Android device. Uh, like I mentioned before, I will be having a link in the about section down below for you guys to go download it and explore it to your heart's content. Um, however, when you do download it, before you do so, um, if you're using it either, if you're going to be downloading it either, you know, through the XDA app or through the device's um, browser or even downloading onto your PC and then sideloading it or pushing it to your SD card, what you're going to want to make sure you do first is head on to your device settings, go on down to security, and then scroll on down to unknown sources. You're going to want to make sure that unknown sources are checked because that is what allows your device to sideload apps onto it. <clears throat> Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Go download it, explore, and have fun. Um, this may or may not be the last video before Christmas. Uh, I do have another toy coming to me that's supposed to be arriving Monday, so we'll see what happens there. Might be a little treat for some of you. Um, but anyways, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, shoot me some love by hitting that likes button down below. If you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. We do have videos, or at least try to have videos, five days a week. We do app reviews, we do ROM reviews, we do device unboxings and reviews and product giveaways all the time. So anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.